So in this lecture, we're going to begin our discussion on triple bonds, and we're going to build a molecular orbital diagram for the simplest alkyne known as acetylene or ethyne. So this compound is composed of two carbon atoms and two H atoms. The bonds between the carbon and the H are 1s sp hybridized, and the bond the sigma bond between the two carbon atoms is SPSP -SP hybridized. Now these two other bonds are the two pi bonds, as we'll see in just a second. So let's try to build our molecular orbital diagram for this compound using the atomic orbitals of the individual atoms. So once again, we have our two H atoms, they're in the neutral state, so that means they each have one electron each in the 1s orbital. So here we have the 1s orbital of the first H and the 1s orbital of the second H. Now this black dot is simply our electron, the valence electron to be specific. So now let's take our two carbon atoms. So once again, these guys are all separated they haven't yet combined to form our ethylene compound. So here we have one carbon and here we have the second carbon. So two of the orbitals for this carbon are sp hybridized and the same thing goes for this carbon. These two orbitals are sp hybridized shown here as well. Now these two orbitals are pure 2p orbitals and we have one electron in each. So altogether, each carbon donates four valence electrons. So we have one valence electron each here and four valence electrons here. Each carbon also has two electrons in the 1s orbital, but that's not shown because the 1s orbital does not react. So now these two carbons can overlap and to be specific, these sp hybridized orbitals will overlap and they will each share an electron. Likewise, the 1s orbital of this H will overlap with the sp orbital of this uh, carbon. And likewise, the 1s orbital here will interact with the sp orbital of the second carbon. And we will form our ethyne compound shown here. So this is the molecular orbital diagram of our simplest alkyne. So, here we have the sp-sp hybridized orbital formed from the overlap of each individual sp hybridized orbital. And here we have our 1s sp on both sides uh, bonds created by the overlap of the 1s and sp hybridized orbital of the carbon. And notice we still have these pure p orbitals. So we have one pure p orbital in the y direction, y being up, and we have one pure p orbital in the z direction, c being coming out of the board. And what will happen is there will be an overlap between our two p orbitals that are parallel in the same plane. So these two guys, these two orbitals will interact and these two orbitals will interact. Notice that since these two orbitals are along the y-axis and these two orbitals are along the z-axis, they're perpendicular to one another. And in fact, both of these two appear to be orbitals are perpendicular to these orbitals, to the 1s sp and to the sp sp. In other words, the sp and the sp and the 1s and the sp are along the x-axis, while the, uh, these orbitals are along the y-axis, and these orbitals are along the z-axis. So all of these guys are perpendicular to one another. So now let's look at the energy diagram for all these interactions. So the 1s interacts with the sp to form the 1s sp sigma uh, molecular orbital. In other words, notice that the 1s is lower in energy than the sp because the 1s has more s character than the sp does. And so when they interact, they form two types of molecular orbitals, bonding and the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So since this is higher in energy, electrons will not be found in this rather destabilizing 
uh, molecular orbital. So let's look at the sp and sp interaction. So when the carbon and the carbon interact to form our bond, our sigma bond, we have an sp-sp interaction within the atomic orbitals to form our molecular orbitals or bonding, sigma bonding molecular orbital. Likewise, since we input two atomic orbitals, we form two molecular orbitals. So we also form the anti-bonding sp-sp sigma molecular orbital. And since this is higher in energy, no electrons go into here. Electrons are only found in the lower stabilizing orbital. Now let's look at the 2p2p interaction, in other words, the pi bonding. Remember, these bonds here are all known as sigma bonds, while these bonds are known, the ones in red, are known as pi bonds. So, when the 2p and 2p interact, which are, by the way, higher in energy than the sp, they form the 2p, 2p pi bonding molecular orbital and the 2p, 2p pi anti-bonding molecular orbital. And once again, both electrons go into the lower in energy pi bonding molecular orbital and no electrons go into the 2p, 2p pi anti-bonding molecular orbital. So once again, as an overview of the triple bond, within the triple bond, we have a single bond, the covalent bond, which is sp-sp hybridized. We have two pi bonds, one along the y direction and one along the z direction. And they're both perpendicular to the covalent sigma bond.